call center capacity modeling and call center capacity planning. Hi, thanks for joining. I'll be, uh, my name is Clint Britt. I'll be your presenter today uh, for this PowerPoint presentation. And if you're watching, uh, you're probably um, interested in learning about uh, capacity for running your call center. Uh, we all know the challenges uh, for running a call center and, and you know what looks good on paper when you're doing your planning and your modeling and your performance management uh, ultimately does not uh, in most cases come to fruition and that can be frustrating uh, f you know for a lot of people within your organization so um, I'll be discussing uh, my thoughts my philosophies on on why I think that capacity planning and modeling uh, should be you know your number one sort of mindset for your operation to um, one improve your accountability towards your agents and, and what their capacity is what you believe and what you've set uh, their capacity to be uh, two getting buy-in from everyone from your your agents slash CSRs to your your seniors that are above you and three uh, increase your performance and ease your performance management so uh, jumping right in we all know that uh, uh, the challenges of running a center, particularly, you know, hundreds of seats, but even 10 seats can be can be daunting, probably harder um, due to uh, economies of scale. But you'll have unplanned turnover. You'll have new hires that take longer to get up to speed, varying shifts, schedules, absenteeism, and you're trying to manage all this with several reports. And yes, I get that your workforce manager and his or her team um, has a lot of this under control and particularly around you know your shifts and schedules but um, I bet that you don't have um, a defined uh, model that takes into account the goals and the capacity of every seat on your floor um, based upon how long they've been with you and uh, and that's what this model is about. It's joining the capacity and the goals to the actual data to help drive uh, your operational performance. So why is capacity planning important? Well, it sets expectations. You know, every agent will see their name and num their name and their numbers on uh, reports, and uh, it'll be stack ranked with their peers. And so they'll they'll know if they need to start working on their craft and they'll know that you know what you expect. Um, it uh, gives you immediate notification if, if associates are falling off track and you can get them back on track before they lose their month. Um, three, it increases uh, competitiveness. So once again, it'll, it will raise your overall team performance bar. The bigger the team, the bigger the numbers. And those numbers start to go up on big teams, this model becomes extremely valuable. And then, so with all that said, you can increase your capacity goals month over month and just continue to increase your effectiveness and your efficiency, which makes a lot of folks up in upper level uh, positions very happy with you. And uh, so uh, it's also a systematic team bought in common ground model. So the capacity of every um, tenure, we'll get to that, but every group of agent is created from grassroots so it takes real world uh, what's happening in your center the challenges uh, it, it takes in it it accounts all of that so it's bought into by everyone on your floor uh, it, at least team lead and above um, it but for agents it gives them a sense of organization and stability they know uh, that you what, what to expect because it's written right in front of them daily. Uh, they believe in it. It's credible because you'll set goals that a portion of your team will, will crush and then the others will have to really strive to. And so it's an excellent leadership tool. Uh, number three, it helps with cost control. Uh, I won't spend a lot of time on cost control, um, uh, but it does serve a bit of a workforce management um, tool not to overstaff because your demand your the success of your agents and their capacity goals has to be very closely monitored and tied into demand call demand and then also 
lastly, it's easy to manage. It's a set, a bit of a set it and forget it, and you won't have your team leads and your managers and your supervisors uh, working on any reports, and you know it's sitting right in front of them when they walk in in the morning, if set up automated. That is so. That's that's what we uh, why those are four reasons why to really take to capacity uh, very serious. It can help you with sales, organization, service doc processing so all your documents white mail emails different social media anything that queues if it is in a queuing environment capacity works wonders and then lead generation so what is you know three definitions of capacity so you have design capacity which is your maximum output rate or service uh, for of an operation a process facility um, that was originally designed for so You'll hear IT folks talking about capacity in terms of different speeds and different sort of storage, and you'll also hear, um, you know, folks in the hotel business, you know, any any kind of stadiums, hotels, airplanes, you know, have capacity limits, and design is in a perfect world. Every seat, every hotel is, you know, is full, and it's running at 100%. It's optimal your demand meets your supply every day every second of every day um, and then and also on call centers you can have a design capacity that every single call has a sale to it which we know that isn't possible but you get the idea for design then you get into real world effective capacity so the definition for that is your design minus allowances so you're going to subtract if you're in IT or if you're in other manufacturing, you know, uh, things breaking down, um, assembly line problems, raw goods, break, you know, things that, you know, you have to uh, you know, change the oil on a certain, <laughs> I don't know, piece of machinery. It's off, out of production. And in our language, in call centers, that's vacation, breaks, other vacancy, like sick and, you know, doc, you know, whatever, whatever else. So that cannot exceed your design capacity. Okay, so that's effective capacity. And we'll develop that here in a second. And then your actual is you uh, have taken your effective. That's what you really have sold to your boss. Um, this is effectively what we can do. This is fair. My agents will nail this. Um, and then you get actual, which is what you actually produce. And if you find that your actual is less than your effective, which is why capacity models are just so awesome to me, that's the money you're leaving on the table via either port, you know, training issues, hiring and firing issues. Um, those are your performance, and that's why we get out of bed every day to make sure that our actual capacity is very close to our effective capacity. There's lots of money, fringe money lost um, when we're not living up to effective capacity. So how do we develop our design capacity? Well, I've so a few steps here. Um, first, kind of 1A is understand that this model is going to be external to your existing sort of canned reports, right? So I'm sure you have a lot of sales reports that come straight from salesforce.com or whatever other CRM you're using. Maybe they've been de developed along the way. But this is um, likely this model is going to be a new model. So you need to know what systems your you guys, your team is using, what CRM, know a little bit about the fields that impact the KPIs, um, the phone system, the WFM system, all of the system, anything that your agents have uh, any kind of tie to that is an important KPI. Because that data, that actual data is going to drive a scoreboard and that scoreboard drives, you know, the performance, just like in athletics. Um, you know, football players, they perform based upon a scoreboard. Let's face it, so do our call center agents. So know your systems. I'm not saying become an IT person, but maybe take them to lunch. <laughs> Get to know your, um, your systems and understand and explain that the inputs are going to really drive, you know, the model. So then you're going to, we're going to develop 
and define success of what I call a seasoned associate. And I'll get into what a season means in a second. But you're going to study a day in the life of your top agents. Uh, what makes them tick? What do they do better than your others? Really isolate because our goal here is to bottle and sell them and make all of the other agents or hope that all the other agents capacity will increase to theirs. So they're going to be your benchmark and you need to sit with them and interview them, interview their team leads, what have you, and document what they do well. Okay, then we're gonna uh, get into more of the business side of the seat value um, in terms of determining success of your center. So on a single seat with the, with the team that you're focused on, meaning everyone's selling us the same product, um, what is the seat value? And what I mean by that is what is the per day expectation for that seat, assuming that they won't have a demand lag. If demand was hitting them all day long, what is the, and they had work to do, um, one shape or form or another, let's say um, that they can do other things if calls aren't coming in, which is awesome, but what is the seat value uh, of a A minus to B plus associate? Don't pick your very best agent who, you know, is somehow unbelievable you know pick you know just a rock solid associates to come up with what your seat value is and that is honing in on five to seven KPIs and really like pretend you were interviewing an agent like you, you need to know what the value of a seat that they're going to be occupying is and you need to be able to explain those you know as they as they are hired and they go up the learning curve how their value their seat value increases and so I like five to seven KPIs obviously you can get a hundred KPIs from all the different systems but really kind of bake it down to your top you know like level one KPIs and 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 so that's what that this is your daily capacity and notice I said daily we'll get to daily uh, that more in a second so and we're going to develop your allowances. So, you know, we we uh, we're not robots, and so we need to create tenures. We need to have an understanding of the learning curve and the amount of time that it takes to to climb that learning curve. And so, in some call centers, it's two months if it's a very simple product, and then in others, I've seen it be a year. So, really buy into what it takes to become what I call a seasoned associate, meaning you're trained at the highest level, you understand the systems, the product, you've, you know, there's not much more learning that you have. And so ask your questions, you know, how long does it take an associate? You know, when can I count on their best? Is it three months, six, nine? Maybe you know by yourself, but um, figure out what that is. Two, um, you know, factor in any shift differences. So are you a swing shift, a graveyard shift operation? Are you 24 by seven? You know, is there a big you know, difference in time of day? Also day of week, you know, are you seven days? Um, is Saturday and Sunday, are you open? And, and does that really slow down? If yes, we need to come up with a tenure that, um, accounts for you know some of these real world factors and then the final is your vacancy policy um, how much time or will you be allowing capacity goals to be reduced based upon time missed this is where workforce management we get that they will be tracking this they will be coming up with availability and compliance to schedule and shrinkage numbers we get all that but how does that translate to their productivity goal will you reduce their goal um, some centers like, you know, to have it as accurate as possible, so they'll they'll actually reduce every single time that someone has missed. Others, like myself, I like to just apply a vacancy factor across all agents because we all get pretty much the same vacation time. And why I do that is I term it a goal erosion. You'll find that if you start reducing people's goals for illness and this and that, you'll have a stack, you know, 
three feet high the next day of different supervisors and managers trying to reduce you know their agents goals because ultimately those goals roll up to the soup so I call that goal erosion so be aware of that other considerations your overtime you do add capacity and then part-time associates so also be ready to uh, adjust for your month of year selling cycle so June may be twice as hot you know so to speak and sales wise uh, as you know January where you're you can't buy a sale you're begging um, and so understand that your capacity goals will be need to reduce with the selling cycle it doesn't mean your team gets worse in the winter time that's just being real and that's changing capacity down and following you know what real world um, you know data has told you from the past so you'll create a very simple and I mean very simple goals table and that will look something like this this is an actual goals table that links to a SQL server but is in Excel and they this particular call center has what is this uh, seven and then this is a workforce management but seven KPIs uh, from just calls answered to total talk time this is an hours average daily total talk time they like that one handle time they like and then unit sales goal of 8.3 for a seasoned agent on the primary shift then they have a secondary shift which is swing they're open till midnight here mountain time so um, anyway these are the tenures and your agent roster will every agent will have a different tenure as they if they've been with you month one month two month three month four their goals climb from four and a half per day to eight point three per day sixty dollars per sale to eighty five per sale and this is under the theory that they will start to add on um, other products and get better with revenue per sale uh, and upsells as they you know as they get uh, better at their job um, and so cross sales, this is a transfer initiative. They transfer to some of their partners and then their overall conversion rate. So this is a very simple goals table and you need to present this and gain buy-in from your managers and your soups and your team leads. And then same idea with, with um, you know, HR and senior management, any other stakeholders that you have, be sure to explain that uh, the increased productivity that you'll be gaining, you know, through this model and HR should love it because they love consistency and then you have to get some resources from IT that you know you'll have to write a scope document which will include the team a roster of your team when they started their name and their who they report to and that kind of thing but this tenure links to the goals that I just showed you and this is that goals table very simple um, by tenure and this will compute your daily capacity and daily I say daily because I'm a fan of daily I think hourly is um, a little too micro and then monthly is a derivative of daily because we know that you know when you string 22 business days together that equals a month a business month unless you're on a calendar month but uh, daily is how I like to roll and then with a monthly stop and start, you know, um, sort of quota environment. You know, you can have a couple of bad days, but if you kick it in the rear, you can catch up and, and end with end with a good month. I find that I get the most out of people when I give them monthly targets, but daily um, stepping stone goals, if that makes any sense. And then make sure to have a business days table to compute your projections. What I mean by that is know what day it is in the month so you can then take that run rate times the remaining amount of time in the in the month and you can project um, where that agent is going to finish. And so and lastly you'll need to have access to tweak things so make sure IT gives you access to these tables. And it'll look something like this. Notice you'll have an ACD system and it's got a hundred different you know fields and CRM has a million fields and your WFM has a lot of fields you'll bring in the fields that are vitally important to this model and you'll be in charge of these tables your agent table your KPI goals table I just showed you in a business days table 
Um, that business is can be automated, but we can talk about that later. Anyway, and it all links into this performance management slash capacity model database. Uh, outputs, I'm just going to show you a very simple output. This is this one is a Microsoft Access model, believe it or not, but is capacity, and it shows that this team here is, there is my mouse, um, kind of hard to see, but Sabrina here is a seasoned agent, meaning she's been with this company for more than seven months. Um, in this case, they chose six months as the, their 10-year learning curve. So her goal is 18 units a day. She's averaging 23.4, so she's leading this team of, I think, 15 or 16 agents. Um, her She sold 211 sales. Her unit capacity is 378, so 18 times 20, and she doesn't have any uh, pre-planned vacancies, so is 378. She's actually on the pace to do 468 or 124% to goal. And I believe when they hit 125%, this turns green. But in any event, you look at a, a agent who is struggling. So we have a sophomore agent who we have a, accounted for her learning curve. They This particular call center chose like, you know, rookie, freshman, junior, senior, soft, you know, all of the high school um, up to season for their nomenclature but she's getting off to a little bit of a slower start and even though we've adjusted for her and so if you're in red you need to be um, coached and improve your game so anyway that's a simple output that you can you can create with IT you know just tell them how you want it to look you need to stack rank send it daily and include projections those are your three your reports have to be stack ranked, sent daily, and include projections. And then be ready to change things. Be ready because you'll make mistakes, and your top associates will love this model, and your struggling associates will have a lot of questions, comments, and suggestions. And I'm sure you know what I mean by that. So try to implement this and watch your production just skyrocket. Um, I appreciate you listening. If you have any questions, please reach out to me at the email address or phone number that you see right there. Thank you so much and good luck. Bye-bye.